So I just finished this 1966 GTO Hearst Competition Plus shifter. Did a few mods to it, changed the body, added some stops. I think you're really gonna like this video. I know it's been a long time since I did another video, but I'm really backed up with work. Before I begin with this video, I'd like to ask you if you can please, if you need to contact me, my information is at the end of the video. But a lot of people don't go to the end of the video. So what I decided to do is here's my information in the bottom description of this video and also on the screen right now. I've got my email address and my website address is right here. Now, if you'd like, I just came up with this new brand called Super 661. Website is super661.com. It's not really finished yet, but you can go on the website and I'll give you some redirects to my old website. If, if you'd like a couple of stickers free, all I would appreciate that you do is go on Instagram and hashtag super661 and then put a link to this video on Instagram. That would be great. So if you want some free stickers, what you do is hit me up on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm five speeds. That's the number five speeds. Again, all my information is here right now in the description and back of the video. So hashtag super661, get some free stickers, and then hit me up in the messages on Instagram and I'll shoot them out to you free of charge. All right, let's get to this video. All right, so I got this 1966 GTO shifter. This is a factory Hurst shifter for the GTO. First things first, it was pretty rusted, so I blasted some things. And what I wanna show you is a couple of the very important wear points that you should be looking for if you decide to rebuild your shifter. First thing is these OEM shifters do not have provisions for stop bolts. You can see here that this is just a small hole, it's not threaded, same thing in the back. And there's really not enough room to actually thread these and tap them for a bolt. Later bodies, such as this one over here, they have provisions, as you could see, for a stop bolt. And the back panel does as well. It's over here, you could see it's got a provision again for a stop bolt. Now, when you're rebuilding these types of shifters. If you want to look at these over here, this has got a stamped Hearst Shifter Competition Plus kind of logo in there, all right, with the patent number and everything. And so if you're really going for a restoration, you may want to use a body that has some sort of Hearst stamping on it. This has got some numbers in them that are barely legible because it's kind of rusted. Uh, the Restore guys look for these numbers, but because this particular shifter is going in one of my new transmissions, I really insist that you have stops. So I'm gonna to try to keep it authentic and put a body, replace it with a body that has some sort of Hearst Competition Plus stamping on it, rather than the new bodies that just have an etching on them, like this one. They're the same exact body, they work just as good, but if you're looking for some sort of authentic type of thing, you can see here that this has a stamping as opposed to just an etching on there. So I wanna go over some wear points. So first off, the cross shaft that goes through the body, sometimes with them being rusty and the body being rusty, you can have some wear as far as the shaft moving like this. I don't know if you could see that there, but there's some movement like this. That's gonna make your whole assembly wobble, All right? So putting a new shaft in, even on the, a used body like this, There really is no wobble at all. That's what I'm trying to make sure to take out as much wear points as possible to tighten up this old shifter. Next thing is obviously we have all these rusty shim plates. They have to go. We're going to replace those. The main thing here is this carrier. Now these carriers are unique to these older shifters. The newer carriers are actually shorter. If I put them together like this, you could see that the new carrier is shorter on this side. So I had to go out and find a good remanufactured carrier. And my friend at Eric Davidson had helped me out getting me one because a lot of times the cross shafts in these wear as well. 
See when you put the selector shaft in there, you have quite a bit of slop. This is, I actually got about 70,000 slop, I measured it. That's just way too much. Now, you know, I guess we could weld it up and bush it and all of that and make it work again. But between the rust on this piece here and the rust in the body, this is really no good. And same thing, you know, if you got something like this, you could have some slop this way as well. Okay, so the whole thing is going to move around between the slop in here, the slop in the body. It's going to really make a, a shift that's going to wobble around a lot. Now, looking at, uh, this is a recondition that's been cleaned up, blasted, and replated. Okay, we can see here with a new, a new pin, this thing fits really tight. There's no movement at all. So that's another important factor here. These old shifters on the pivot bolt have a, uh, two nylon bushings that you can see here. And these were really dried out and worn. And got some new ones made up out of Delrin on the new shaft and that'll tighten that up as well. Most of these old shifters with these bushings, they're all dried out by now. Don't forget, it's uh, 50 years old worth of bushings here, and they're gonna be dried out and, and destroyed by now. So you gotta change them. That's important. Springs, of course, they could fatigue. So we've got new springs for it. All right, so when it comes to the shifter gates, you wanna check for wear in the gate. And you could take your plunger and put it in here like this and check, but you're gonna see something here. This has some sort of play in it, like this. And that's normal, all right, because even if I take a new plunger and a new gate and put it together, you're going to see that they have pretty much the same play. So this is something I really don't worry about too much. You kind of have to have a feel for this to know if it's excessive or not. Unfortunately, all these arms are a little bit different. They have a little bit different lengths to them, and so it's kind of crucial if you want to set this thing up properly. Now, because this particular shifter body is going into a, uh, a newer type of unit, I can pretty much use these types of gates if I want to on it. I don't really see too much of a difference, and I might do that depending on how they all feel, but they all seem pretty good. So there's no reason not to use them. And personally, the older gates sometimes were a little bit nice and flat against one another. They were better than the new gates, which tend to be a little bit warped. So you can see here that it's a little bit more wavy. Okay, where it's a different type of stamping. I think they really ground these and clean these up better. They're stampings, but they seem to be really good stampings. I mean, look at how well they fit against one another, how, how square and flat they are, all right? as opposed to some of these new ones. I mean, look, if you look at this, how these old ones fit together. Just the three. Now, even though we're gonna have shims here, I'm doing this to show you the flatness of these particular plates. These are the old original plates. And we see how flat these are. Now, let me go get some new plates and show you the difference. Right, so I took some new plates out and I wanna show you something. I mean, if I had my way, I probably would put these on a surface grinder and clean them up. But I just want to show you something here. Look at the gaps in these plates. They're not really flat, you see? So a lot of the new shifters that you buy, a lot of times I'll go over these plates a little bit and try to clean them up, take the burrs off of them, and get these to sit a little bit flatter. But look at the, the gaps there. Again, compared to the old setup. So I really like using the old plates, or some people call these gates, okay? Because they just fit better. They're much better pieces. Hearst needs to work on that a little bit better. So one of the last things is the stick itself. A lot of people go out and get them re-chromed. I have some protective covering on the stick here. The chrome plating on it is really good. The hearse detail on it is really good. So I really don't want to replate this at the customer's request. But on the back side of this, there are pins that it runs against. And you can see this wear in the shifter. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this up and clean this up and flatten it out again to take out some of the play. This is going to cause lateral play like this when it pivots because it's worn over here. It's pretty, it's worn pretty good. So I'll build this up with some weld and clean it back up again. And then we'll have a nice, a nice shifter once it's all together. A few other things I want to show you. Always change the roll pins that go in between the selector. You can see that this pin is really worn really bad. Again, this would cause additional slop and extra movement that you don't need. So just on another note, there are two types of reversed plungers. And so this bias plunger, you can see is a very rounded pipe plunger. It only fits into the rounded type carrier. Notice this carrier has holes on both ends, so the plunger will go through them like this, all right? The later style systems have a stamped steel type plunger. You see it's the same kind of profile, but only it's a stamping, and obviously it has a slot in the back for this to work and some cutouts for this to work like this. So it's a little bit different type of setup, and but that's the difference of them. So you can't mix and match. All right, so I welded up the ends. Of the shifter. No, it looks a little crude, but it is really good. It's really strong. Works fine. Mic'd them up. I got them browned down exactly the way I want them now. So they're ready to go. And we could start by putting in new Delrin bushings into the shifter. The flat side of the bushing faces down like this. Also, if they feel really loose within the shifter, in other words, if they're putting if you put these in here and they tend to want to move a lot like this. You may want to take the shifter stick and put it in a vise and compress it a bit and tighten them up a bit so there is no movement because sometimes that could happen. These fit nice and tight in this now. So that's going to look pretty good. So we're going to put that aside, put them in there, and then we're going to start assembling things. All right, so what I did was I took a micrometer and I took a new receiver and I measured the thickness of the ends of the new receiver and they measure approximately about 120 thousandths, 119 thousandths welded up the ends of the old stick to produce the same thickness and then I reassembled it in the carrier to make sure that it wasn't binding at all that it was fitting okay and also that the with the new bushings and everything that there was no end play up and down that there was nothing funky because what you don't want to do is go through the trouble of assembling the whole shifter and then find out that nothing's going to work out properly that something's still loose or still moving around so one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that there was no play over here, which there was before. In other words, the pins are nice and tight against the, the end of the stick now, and that's great. And the stick doesn't move up and down. It doesn't move side to side. It just has a good twivel action, which is what I want. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to take this all apart and then show you how to put the whole shifter together. But I'm really happy about the way this thing turned out. It looks really great. And I can't wait to put it together and put it on a transmission and see how it works. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to put some grease on my fixture that I made so everything slides in. Also, I've got grease inside the carrier. Fairly good amount of grease. Again, I'm using this uh, driven EPG grease. You can use any type of grease that doesn't wash away with water. But I, I've had very good luck with this grease. And we're going to lay the carrier in the jig now. What I've had to do on this particular setup, because this carrier is longer, I had to notch out the fixture over here. So I may make another drawing that corrects that, okay? But for now, we'll just put this in like this. Set it in there. A little bit different, got to sneak this in. Good there. Washer on it. 
going to go together nice. These bolts are just merely there to hold the springs in place. So it can't go anywhere. Have to make sure that everything is kind of lined up properly. So I can push everything through. Putty knife is going to grab that little washer and I'm going to use a punch here to push the spring down to get inside here. There we go. And we'll straighten the stuff out. We'll get that washer straight down the hole here. Looks good. <clears throat> right, so springs are all in there. Again, it takes really less than a minute to assemble these things using that jig. The information on how to make your own is listed in the links below and on my first video. So I'm going to just put some grease on the reverse bias plunger. Put that in here. That looks good. And then I'm going to put some grease on the selector. Put that in. Then I'm going to now do the two pins. So I greased, put some grease on the carriage bolt and I'm going to put the bolt through the shifter. I'm doing this because I don't want the... <clears throat> needed to have it pivoting and I don't want the bushings to fall out for any reason at all. There we go. So that's in there like this. And now what I'm going to do is put in the vise. I did the last time. Put it like this. Slide in the selector. And maybe put a little bit more grease on it. Too. Can never not put enough grease in this, this system here. This just takes one nylon washer in the front. It seems to work out fine that way. And I'm putting this on here so I can pivot the stick and get the pins in properly.
That looks really nice. I'm also, I mentioned before with the split pins on the first video, I keep the split not on the area where it's going to rotate again. So I point the splits down or up just so they're not in the way of things. Making sure the pins are nice and even. That looks good. This 15,000 shim that I'm putting on here is different from the 30,000 shim. You can see the shape has got this little kick out and a little bit of a rounded edge in front. So you always know how it goes with the tail of the shim facing towards the back. So a lot of times people can get confused about what arm goes where, but as you can see, the arms have clearance for the plunger, the middle arm, or the one-two arm. The three-four arm doesn't. It just has a little hole in it. You see these have a rectangular slot kind of in here, and this has just a hole that fits in there like that. And usually when you have the whole stack together, you kind of know it because it kind of ends up flush with the stack. I've seen them in both directions like this, but I prefer that they go like this. I really don't think it matters much, but I think that they're trying to really keep the top end of the gates from rattling. This stuff can be really sharp, so be very careful when you put this thing together in here. So what you're going to have to do is just kind of work this back and forth a bit until you get everything lined up where you like them. I have a punch sometimes I'll put in here like this and work it through. That fits good. So you may want to just leave this in here for now so I can just get this bridge plate back in place. You want to make sure these square ends of the carrier are really in the bridge plate before you tighten it down, okay? And you don't want to be bending the bridge plate into the shifter. You just want to have it flush and tight. Like that. All right, so I'm going to reinstall the backing plate. And you can use the, the two-punch method that I used uh, taking apart that in the first video, the shifter. And that is getting kind of a punch in here like this and using the leverage of the punch to kind of just spread the body apart and then stick another punch in this way and press down on it. 
to make sure your, your, your tang is in the, the slot. So I got, once you kind of get it past, it's in the slot. Once you get it past here, it's pretty easy to put in the rest of the way. Let's put in some stop bolts. It's just so different feeling the shifter from before. Everything is so tight on it now. It's going to be great. So one last thing is the dust shield. And uh, that just fits in like this. These are also very sharp, okay? So I don't recommend you really trying to push them in with your fingers. Just get them started and then let them, what I do is I, I kind of get it started into one tang and I bend it down like this. And let it go in like that. Make sure it's caught in the tangs, which it is. That's it. So one last thing is I'll put an alignment pin in there just to keep everything in place and it's all done. So a little bit about these her shift amounts. This is the original 2223 shift amount that was used in a lot of OEM applications and in the early 60s. It's an aluminum mount and the problem with these mounts is that they tend to strip out the holes and crack. The replacement mount is the 7773 mount the holes line up in the same place, but this particular mount actually gives you options for the early 27 spline tails and then the later 32 spline tails. In other words, it's universal. It works on both 27 and 32 spline tails. So if you use this mount, you can technically put a late model 32 spline transmission in your early GTO or you know whatever car uses this type of mount, all right? So, that's it on the mount. So I always prefer to use the steel mount instead of the aluminum mount. So I want to talk about the shift rods and adjusters on these early type of setups. They have what's kind of called a clamp setup or a swage type of setup where it locks itself in place. You can see here how this thing kind of fits in there, tightens up and jams itself up against the, the rod and, and holds it in place. The problem is on the heavy shift, these can tend to get loose and slip and throw the whole shifter out of adjustment. I much prefer the later threaded rods that have the adjuster that threads in place. So it's pretty much locked in place. If you even want to lock it up even firmer, you can actually put a jam nut on either side of these things and that'll prevent it from even skipping the threads. But I, I much prefer this positive type of setup better than the clamp type setup, which can eventually slip on their hard usage. So another thing is bushings. I like to use my hardened tool steel bushings and heavy duty spring clips, okay? These clips here. These tend to fit into the rods and the adjusters better than the factory clips. The tool steel bushing is modeled after the factory plastic bushing. It's got the same dimensions and it's much better bushing than the pit pack bushing that you see that doesn't have a flange on it. So the problem when you don't have this type of flange, it doesn't support the rod from moving like this. This flange really keeps everything stable and nice and perpendicular to one another. And these bushings are made out of powdered metal, so they tend to crack. So I really don't use these bushings at all. So any installation kit you get from me is going to have these tool steel bushings in them. So I assemble them again using these types of rods with these ends on it and the tool steel bushings and the steel plate on this particular application. It should be really good. Let's see how it looks on the transmission. Also, as shown many times in my videos, these powdered metal bushings have a tendency to crack really easy, so I really don't use them. You can see it just, it just shatters. It's because it's a powdered metal piece. It's not really steel, okay?
Okay, so this transmission's all done now. The shifter's installed. I really like the way it came out. And I just wanna show you a little bit of, of what I did, the way I kinda do these shifters. I think you'll appreciate it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, see you soon.